those who criticize our generation forget who raised it and also forget or just don't have a clue what position they have left us in. So it is our turn now to fix what has been done and we must stand up and we must stand up quickly for our next generation, for our grandchildren, before it's too late. So I just want to ask you one question and that question is, what does freedom mean to you? Young Turks has been one of the few uh, media outlets that's covering the National Defense Authorization Act and what a horrible piece of legislation it is. I thought it was one of the worst we've ever passed because it allows for the indefinite detention of U.S. citizens without a trial. President Obama uh, on New Year's Eve signed uh, the National Defense Authorization Act. Gee, I wonder why he did it then. Obviously taking a lot of heat for it and so he does it uh, when no one is paying attention. But. President Obama wants to make clear that under his administration that the executive branch will not detain U.S. citizens since he's given the option in this bill basically with the vague language because one portion definitely states that he can detain U.S. citizens. Should any application of these provisions conflict with my constitutional authorities, I will treat the provisions as non-binding. Excuse me, but what the hell is that? Did you guys... Or did, did we? any of us take civics courses? Did President Obama take a civics course? He taught constitutional law. Where in the Constitution does it say, hey, by the way, a president can sign a bill, but then say that I can treat any part of it he doesn't like as non-binding? <laughs> That's the most unconstitutional thing I've ever heard. It's totally not within our, uh, uh, our government to say, hey, you know what? Uh, the president is basically the can do any damn thing he likes. He can take a law and say, ah, I like part A, I like part B, but I don't like 18 other parts. I'm glad you passed it in its entirety and I signed it in its entirety, but that is not how I will execute the law. It's ridiculous. It was ridiculous when Bush did it. That's why we were so mad about it. It's still ridiculous under Obama. Other administrations and other courts will not take this signing statement as law because it isn't law. It is the president's opinion about a law that he's actually putting into effect. Now, second part, it says, I want to clarify that my administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens. Indeed, I believe that doing so would break with our most important traditions and values as a nation. My administration won't do it, but it'll be law, so you can be indefinitely detained later. Good luck to you. I don't know if it's part of his re-election campaign to then turn around and say, see, you don't want to elect a Republican because they might indefinitely detain you, whereas I signed into the law, but will, out of the goodness of my heart, choose not to do it until I change my mind. Hello, I'm Congressman Charlie Dent. I'm proud to be the sponsor of the Bipartisan Enemy Expatriation Act. Identical legislation was also introduced in the Senate, the sanctity of American citizenship and its crucial role in our dialogue regarding national security is now garnering increased and bipartisan attention in both chambers of Congress. I'm hopeful this renewed attention will increase the awareness of and support for the Enemy Expatriation Act. The bipartisan legislation I introduced this week calls for a pragmatic recognition that a person who is supporting acts of terror against the United States is demonstrating that they have no intent in acting as a U.S. citizen, and they clearly no longer wish to be a citizen of our great nation. 
Our legislation clarifies that engaging in hostilities by supporting terrorism would also constitute an expatriating act. Simply put, this bill modernizes the process by which the citizenship status of an individual engaged in hostilities against the American people is examined by treating terrorists in the same manner as a U.S. citizen who marched through the Third Reich decades ago. I believe being an American citizen is more than a right. While we don't want fear to govern our daily lives, the failed terrorist attack in Times Square in May 2010, along with the attempted attack on Flight 253 on Christmas Day 2009, are grim reminders that we are fighting a war against terrorists, aiming to dismantle American ideals and our way of life. We cannot and we will not allow them to triumph. With mega uploads being stormed today, is the United States planning to bring charges against 25% of the internet users, including you? Now, anyone out there that's used mega uploads, you've got a major problem right now. Why? Because they have all the records of everyone that ever uploaded a file or ever downloaded a file. And do you know what the United States does to anybody that even like downloads a few songs? Look at this woman, Jamie Thomas, a single mom struggling to get by. Obama's Department of Justice is arguing that she needs to pay $1.5 million for just downloading 24 songs from Kazaa. But back to mega uploads, that's what this video is about. I'm just referring to Jamie Rasser Thomas because that's a preview of coming events for you. That's right, 25% of the users on the internet have used mega upload. Probably you have, or one of your friends, or a member of your family. Did you know in the United States that the statutory damages for copyright infringement are $150,000 per infringed work? And if you saw the video I just put up that featured Richard O'Dwyer in England, who had a website that just linked to copyright infringing material, think how screwed you are if you ever uploaded anything that was copyright infringing. Think how screwed you are if you ever downloaded something that was copyright infringing. So if you uploaded 10 movies or 10 TV shows to mega uploads, they got the records. They're, they're gonna take everything you own. And guess what? In the United States, you can't get out of copyright infringement. You can't declare bankruptcy because the media has such a stranglehold over our politicians in the United States. You're all screwed. And this is, this is what I even sopa or pipa. Holy crap. I'm not kidding. That's what's going on here. Welcome to the police state, because you're going to become a permanent part of it. Look at this, the United States imprisons a larger percentage of its population than any country on Earth. 20% more people than even Russia imprisons. Of course, the United States is proud of the fact that they're one of the only countries on Earth that execute minor children, even for nonviolent offenses. Is this the tourist destination you want to bring your family to? Of course, copyright laws are much more important than laws that could stop this. That's right, United States, we're number one for imprisoning our population because the corporations run the prisons. And what does a corporation want to do? They want more clients, they want more profits. So the more people they can imprison, the more money those prisons are making. Oh, and they're forced labor too. This is all real, look it up online. Human rights organizations, as well as political and social ones, are condemning what they are calling a new form of inhumane exploitation in the United States, where they say a prison population of up to 2 million, mostly black and Hispanic, are working for various industries for a pittance for the tycoons who have invested in the prison industry. It has been like finding a pot of gold. They don't have to worry about strikes or paying unemployment insurance, vacations or comp time. All of their workers are full-time and never arrive late and are absent never because of family problems. Moreover, if they don't like the pay of 25 cents an hour and refuse to work, they're locked up in isolation cells. And they're gonna use copyright infringement worldwide to drag you here to stock our slave labor camps. Isn't this exciting? You're gonna get a free trip to America to work in one of our slave labor camps. This is just the first one. They're gonna be doing rapid share and all the other ones. And they're gonna storm these offices, take their computers, and they're gonna have your information in them. No kidding. If you watch my other SOPA videos, you're going to find out that the CNET division of CBS television really started the whole phenomenon of internet piracy. They've never been arrested or stormed, have they? And they won't be because they're a billion dollar American corporation. We found that out. We have so much damning evidence, no one will pay us any attention. You know, they're still distributing that software there. Oh, I almost forgot BitTorrent. You know that, you know that software called BitTorrent? BitTorrent's a company based in the United States. Who are the investors in BitTorrent? 
um, a cell partners, um, whoever DAG is, Doll Capital Management. A lot of those people, I think, were like Paul Allen, Microsoft. I'm not sure. I think I think Dell Computers might have invested in it. There were a lot of investors in BitTorrent. And Excel Partners is known for being what? They're the major investor in Facebook. They're one of the single largest owners and investors of Facebook. Wow! And aren't you all just about figuring out we're all a bunch of freaking pawns in all of this? Because I asked a TV station reporter once, how come they never stormed BitTorrent? They said because it's owned by most of the large corporations in America. How? Now what? We've kept you alive, now you can tell me. How do you keep winning? Very simple. You do all the hard work, I just help you along. The art is for me to feed pieces to you and make you believe you took those pieces because you're smarter and I'm dumber. In every game and con, there is always an opponent and there is always a victim. The more control the victim thinks he has, the less control he actually has. Gradually, he will hang himself. And I, as the opponent, just help him along. So, is that the treasured formula? The formula has infinite depth in its efficacy and application, but it is staggeringly simple and completely consistent. Rule one of any game or con, you can only get smarter by playing a smarter opponent. Rule number two. The more sophisticated the game, the more sophisticated the opponent. If the opponent is very good, he will place his victim inside an environment he can control. The bigger the environment, the easier the control. The toss the dog a bone, find their weakness, give them just a little of what they think they want. Check. So the opponent simply distracts their victim by getting them consumed with their own consumption. Check. The word snake springs to me. Don't knock it. You only get smarter by playing a snake. The bigger the trick, the older the trick, the easier it is to pull. Based on two principles. They think it can't be that old, and they think it can't be that big for so many people to have fallen for it. Eventually, when the opponent is challenged or questioned, it means the victim's investment and thus his intelligence is questioned. No one can accept that. Not even to themselves. Checkmate. I ain't playing you again. You will always find a good opponent in the very last place you would ever look. One day, somebody's gonna have to make a stand. One day, somebody's gonna have to say enough. Do it! Do it. We will save this country! We will save this country! Ourselves! Ourselves! Ourselves. Thank you!